King Leopold II of Belgium is a name synonymous with one of the darkest chapters in colonial history. Under his rule, the Congo Free State became the site of widespread atrocities, resulting in the deaths of millions of Africans. This article delves into the horrific reign of King Leopold II, examining his motivations, the brutal methods used to exploit the Congo, and the lasting impact of his actions on the region and the world. Leopold II ascended to the throne of Belgium in 1865. Ambitious and driven by a desire to increase his country's prestige, Leopold turned his attention to Africa, which was being rapidly colonized by European powers. Unlike other monarchs who pursued territorial expansion for their nations, Leopold harbored a personal ambition to acquire a colony that he could rule as his private domain. His eyes fell on the Congo Basin, a vast and resource-rich region in Central Africa. Leopold cleverly positioned himself as a humanitarian, claiming that his interest in the Congo was driven by a desire to end the Arab slave trade and bring civilization and Christianity to the indigenous people. To this end, he established the International African Association in 1876, ostensibly a philanthropic organization. Using this front, Leopold secured international support and, through a series of diplomatic maneuvers, gained personal control over the Congo Basin at the Berlin Conference of 1884 to 1885. Thus, the Congo Free State was born, not as a Belgian colony, but as the private possession of King Leopold II. Leopold's true intentions soon became apparent. The Congo Free State was rich in natural resources, particularly rubber and ivory. Leopold established a brutal regime to extract these resources, employing mercenaries and creating a private army known as the Force Public. This force was tasked with enforcing labor quotas and punishing those who resisted or failed to meet expectations. The methods employed to extract rubber were especially barbaric. Villagers were forced to harvest rubber from wild vines, a labor-intensive and dangerous task. To ensure compliance, the forced public took hostages, often women and children, to coerce the men into meeting quotas. Failure to comply resulted in brutal punishments, including mutilation, particularly the severing of hands and mass executions. Entire villages were destroyed, and countless individuals were subjected to torture and inhumane treatment. The human cost of Leopold's regime was staggering. Estimates of the death toll vary, but it is widely accepted that at least 10 million Congolese perished during his rule, which lasted from 1885 to 1908. The population decline was a result of systematic murder, starvation, exhaustion, and disease, all exacerbated by the brutal exploitation of the land and its people. The social fabric of the Congolese society was torn apart with families destroyed and communities decimated. Reports of the atrocities in the Congo began to filter out, thanks to the efforts of missionaries, travelers, and journalists. One of the most notable figures in exposing the horrors of the Congo Free State was British journalist Edmund Dean Morell. Morell, who initially worked for a shipping company that handled cargo to and from the Congo, noticed discrepancies in the trade patterns and began to investigate. His findings, along with the testimonies of individuals like Roger Casement and George Washington Williams, who provided detailed accounts of the atrocities, fueled an international campaign against Leopold's regime. The Congo Reform Association, co-founded by Morell and Casement, played a crucial role in mobilizing public opinion and pressuring governments to act. In response to the growing international outcry, the Belgian government finally intervened. In 1908, the Congo Free State was annexed by Belgium, becoming the Belgian Congo. While this transition marked the end of Leopold's direct rule, the exploitation and suffering of the Congolese people continued under Belgian colonial rule, albeit with somewhat more oversight and slightly less brutality. King Leopold II's legacy is one of greed, brutality, and genocide. His actions in the Congo left an indelible mark on the region and its people. The demographic, social, and economic devastation wrought by his regime had long-lasting effects that are still felt today. The artificial boundaries and the exploitation initiated during Leopold's reign set the stage for ongoing conflict, instability, and underdevelopment in the region. Leopold himself faced little in the way of direct consequences for his actions. 
He amassed a vast personal fortune from his exploitation of the Congo, much of which he used to fund lavish building projects in Belgium. His death in 1909 brought little solace to the millions who suffered under his rule. In Belgium, he was initially remembered as a great builder and modernizer, but over time, his reputation became increasingly tarnished as the full extent of his atrocities in the Congo became more widely recognized. In recent years, there has been a growing movement to acknowledge and address the legacy of Leopold II. Statues and monuments dedicated to him have become the focus of controversy and protest, with many calling for their removal or recontextualization to reflect his true legacy. In 2020, amid global protests against racial injustice, several statues of Leopold were defaced or removed, highlighting the ongoing reckoning with his brutal legacy. Efforts to educate the public about the atrocities committed in the Congo have also increased. Scholars, activists, and descendants of Congolese victims continue to advocate for greater recognition of this dark chapter in history. The story of the Congo Free State serves as a stark reminder of the devastating impact of colonialism and the importance of historical accountability.